All right, we're out here at the tower site again, and we're going to be doing a weather radio project. So we're going to be incorporating a weather radio into the repeater for two reasons. The first reason is to put up a broadcast five feet of the local tower, and then we're also going to be putting up a patch through so that when a warning is issued, it comes through on the VHF repeater side. So it'll rebroadcast the NOAA alert through the repeater. So we're actually going to be using a Cobra 18WX Sound Tracker 2 CB radio that has a weather radio built in. And the reason we're using this is because it automatically comes on when the radio regains power. A couple of the weather radios I have and other various receivers, if the thing loses power, you have to manually set it back to weather radio mode or turn it on or do something like that. This will come back on the channel that you left it on even when the power gets lost. So we've got a plug here. We're going to be modifying this to work on my power supply. And we're going to be putting the weather radio probably about right in there. So let's get started with all that. Alright, so we have made a NOAA weather radio decoder. Uh, we can play the input tones into it. So this is the alert that plays right before the start of a message. This is going to allow the repeater to broadcast warnings. Just running the coax. All right, so we got the antenna up there. It's just a tape measure Yagi. Yeah, it will be replacing it eventually with something that's more weatherproof, but we got it mounted up there just to get it up. You almost don't even need it up here. It was getting a full signal with just the coax connected, but now we have a beam pointed right at the tower. So that's pretty cool. So inside here, this has never been done before, to my knowledge, done this way. So I'm gonna go through how we have it set up. So we have the weather radio here. It's just a CB radio with a weather band function built in and the power is powered off of our power supply here in the RCOM this is where it gets interesting we have the expansion header here which is auxiliary audio and ground auxiliary audio is sort of like another port there's three ports on an RCOM but auxiliary audio one two and three are just more options for sound injection and we have a macro set up for displaying the, or playing the audio out through ports 1 and 2. That way it transmits out over the radio and over Zello, but not over All Star. So when the pin there gets high, the alarm pin goes high, it transmits the audio through the other pins. Now the alarm pin is the first pin we used alarm 1. Alarm input, log, alarm logic input one, and we didn't have the DB5 connector with us, 
I forgot it at home, so we just solder straight onto the little resistor there. That is corresponds to pin 16 or alarm logic 1. So the macro, whenever alarm logic 1 is triggered, it triggers alarm 1, which plays, which triggers a macro, which opens up auxiliary port 1 and plays it through ports 1 and 3. Now for the actual board itself, this is what we built custom. There is your audio coming in from the radio. So the way we have this set up is the audio from the weather radio plays into this computer up here, which then has the output of the sound card monitoring the input of the sound card. So it just passes the audio through the computer and this gives us a source to stream the weather channel to Broadcastify. Then it plays back out through this cable here into the input of this box. Now we have two tone decoders in here, an Arduino, some custom code, and this whole board is custom. But basically when it starts detecting the same code, there that light just flashed there, I guess there's a little bit of noise that triggered it. But um, when it decodes the first bit of the bits that are sent whenever there's a warning or watch issued, it turns one of the pins high, and that pin is set to logic one. And then when the warning is over, meaning when it's spoken out all the information about the warning or the watch, and the final three digits come through, the final three bursts of data that turn off your weather radio, it detects that and it turns it off. The reason this is different from a lot of other setups is that most people just use a timer to control that. A lot of weather radios will have an alarm, they'll have a port on them where for an alarm to go off whenever a warning comes through, but it doesn't turn off on its own. It turns off when you manually turn it off or when it times out. And the problem with that is you, don't, you either don't get the full warning or you don't get the full stop. So we've got a custom board which allows us to patch through just the audio of the warning and then cut it out when it's done. Alright, so that's about it. Everything with this system. We've tested it and it works pretty well, so we'll be keeping an eye on it when Wednesday comes around to make sure the, the uh, test cycle comes through. And once that comes through, once or twice, we'll know that this thing is solid and, and working good. But there you go. That's how you add weather band pass-through to a re repeater um, the right way. <laughs> Get put an antenna up there and when the repeater is transmitting there's no descents on this. It's far enough away in frequency and the signal's so strong coming onto this antenna that there's no descents at all. We're really happy with it. So there you go. Weather band on the KM4 OVZ repeater.